In this lesson, we calculate the confidence limits for the index CPK for the critical process capability. We also talk about the confidence level and sample size. And hello again to this lesson, which essentially has two learning objectives. After this lesson, you should be able to calculate and correctly document the confidence intervals of the critical machine and process capability. Furthermore, you should know the influence of the sample size and the confidence level on the size of the confidence intervals. This lesson is divided into two chapters. In the first chapter, we will calculate two confidence intervals. One for the 95% confidence level, the other for a 99% confidence level. Both for the same sample size. In the second chapter, we then look at the influence of the confidence number and the sample size on the width of the confidence interval. Let's start with the calculation of the 90 and 99% confidence limits for the process capability. Short note, 90% is not a commonly used confidence level. This was just chosen for training purposes. 95% and 99% are more common. On the left are the formulas that we will use for further calculations. Firstly, the formula for calculating the process capabilities. Beneath is the formula for calculating the confidence interval. In these formulas, the abbreviations CMK and CPK stand for the critical machine and process capability respectively. CPK or CMK with a circumflex, this is the little roof over the letter, indicates that the value is an estimate based on a sample. LSL and USL are the lower and upper specification limits respectively, or the minimum and maximum allowable dimensions. Small s is the standard deviation of the sample. X bar is the arithmetic mean of the sample. U for 1 minus alpha half is the quantile of the standard normal distribution for the confidence interval. How to calculate the quantiles of the standard normal distribution is explained in a separate lesson. In this lesson, we will take the values from a table. As a product characteristic, we use the diameter of this piston. The critical process capability has already been calculated based on a random sample of 100 pieces, as shown here as an example in the form of a list with the raw data. Its value is 1.8. The question now is, how big the confidence interval is. This is to be calculated for three different situations. First, for a confidence level of 90% and a sample size of 100. Second, for the same confidence level, but with a reduced sample size of only 20. And third, for a confidence level of 99% and a sample size of 100. So, we keep the specifications just presented regarding the critical process capability index, the confidence level, the sample size, and the formula on the left side during the further calculations. At this point, some basic knowledge of distributions is required. Nevertheless, the following is briefly summarized here. We assume that the values are normally distributed. The area under the curve represents 100% of all values. In relative terms, the area is equal to 1. A confidence level of 90% means that 90% of all values should be between the limits to be calculated. This is the area shown here in blue and is denoted by 1 minus alpha. 
Alpha is the proportion of all values that are outside these limits. Because of the symmetry, these are alpha halves on the left and alpha halves on the right. The limits just mentioned are so-called quantiles. These can be taken from tables for the standardized normal distribution for different probabilities or be calculated with Excel, for example. Unfortunately, the values in the tables are only given for one-sided limits, so that the conversion shown here on the right-hand side has to be made. Then, with alpha 5%, the yellow area is outside the boundary. With 1 minus alpha equal to 95%, the blue area is inside the boundary. For a confidence interval of 99%, it is then 99.5%. Here is a very small excerpt from a table for the standardized normal distribution. For some common and frequently used probabilities, the associated one-sided quantiles, or U-scores, are given here. In the literature, you will find different letters for these quantiles. This can be U or Z or something else. For 95%, this is 1.645, and for 99.5%, this is 2.576. Both values were included in the calculation as additional variables. If you now enter the values in the well-known formula for the confidence intervals, the following limit values are calculated. The upper limit for the confidence interval is 2.02 and the lower one is 1.58. So, given a sample size of 100, we can say that there is a 90% probability that the true CPK value will be in the range of 1.58 to 2.02. By now, it should have become clear that in addition to the process capability index, there is always an indication of the confidence interval and the confidence level required. In the same way as for the confidence level of 90% and a sample size of 100, the confidence interval for a reduced sample size of only 20 was calculated here. This goes from 1.3 to 2.3. If one now compares the two confidence intervals for N20 and N100, it is immediately apparent that the confidence interval is narrower for a larger sample size than for a small sample size. It was also to be expected that the larger the sample size, the greater the confidence in the calculated result. If one had measured 100% of the population, then there would be no longer a confidence interval, since the true value would have been determined in this way. In this chapter, we go into more detail about the relationships between the size of the confidence interval and its dependency on the sample size and the confidence level. As stated at the end of the previous chapter, there is a clear connection between the width of the confidence interval and the sample size. The larger the sample size, the narrower the confidence limits. In other words, the larger the sample, the greater the confidence in the result can be. With the given confidence level, the relationship shown here between the confidence interval for the critical process capability index and the sample size can be represented graphically with a few additional points. Third, the confidence interval for a confidence number of 99% and a sample size of 100 was calculated here again. This has a range from 1.46 to 2.14. A comparison with the first result shows that the larger the confidence number, 
the wider the confidence interval. It's kind of clear. If you want to increase the probability that a value can be found in a certain range, then the width of this range must be increased. Typical requirements for critical process capability indexes are values of 1, 1.33, 1.67 and 2. Common confidence levels are 95 and 99%. The confidence intervals for these are shown here as a function of the sample size, once in tabular form and once graphically. Perhaps now would be a good time to pause the video to take a closer look at these relationships. Well, that was a lot of new information. Therefore, I would like to conclude by repeating the three most important key messages. The complete designation of a critical machine or process capability, CMK or CPK, includes the confidence interval and the confidence level. The larger the sample size, the narrower the confidence intervals. The smaller the sample size, the broader the confidence intervals. The larger the confidence level, the further apart are the confidence limits. If you found this lesson helpful, please let me know and leave a comment. Thank you for that. Take care and see you next time. Bye.